Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to go over some of Emily in Paris's best and worst looks from season two. If you had the same idea as me, I feel like season one, like the fashion was getting there. It wasn't as good as season two, which is why I wanted to go through some of the details, the designers and the costs of some of the looks that Emily wore in season two, because I thought that overall her style improved and as a side note, like Camille's style was so much better and she seemed like a much more like neutral French fashion icon. Some of the stuff that she wore, especially with that Celine bucket hat and I think she was wearing leather shorts with it and like a padded tank on top just in cream. I loved that look so much. But in this video, I did want to focus on Emily's looks more because she's the one that's a little bit more controversial. Obviously, she loved wearing pattern on pattern and really bold looks, a lot of different color. And we didn't see her in a lot of like classics, but near the end and that final episode look that she wore at the runway show, it was insane. I loved it. So I'll definitely be reviewing that one. But without further ado, So this first look that I wanted to go over was this Dolce & Gabbana bralette and short set. And I was actually looking on Farfetch and Dolce & Gabbana are doing so many of these. There are so many on the website right now. And these sort of patchwork like bustier tops are going for around like a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars or so. But this is one that I feel like was quintessentially Emily. Lots of different pattern on pattern and I think they did a good job in sort of toning it down with the green blazer on top. But overall, would I wear this outfit? Maybe not, but I did really like the idea of the bralette and short set with a blazer on top. That's definitely something that I can see myself wearing if it's in spring or summer. I'm definitely more likely to than in winter time. But I think you could take inspiration, or at least I took inspiration in terms of the style of the outfit. Maybe not so much the exact pieces, but if you did want to look at any of the options that I have here on screen, Farfetch is definitely the place to get them. This video was not sponsored by Farfetch, but Trust me, I would love for it to be. This next look is from episode seven. It's pretty out there. I liked the different elements, but not necessarily all together. It's this one with the peplum style top with like big fluffy sleeves, the red mini skirt, and the white gladiator boots. I would never put this together in a million years, but it definitely is screaming fashion. The top is actually from a Greek designer that I hadn't heard of before. The name is, let me make sure I get it right, Vasilis Zulias. Probably pronouncing that wrong, but that's my best try. And if you go on their website, I'll have the link to that in the description box below. You will see that this is not inexpensive. <laughs> it's definitely on the higher side. So it's called the Beatrice Blue Check Top and it's currently retailing for $2,587 Canadian. And that's, that's a lot for this style top. I mean, I think it's super cute. It's very trendy. I've seen so many times the really far off the shoulder sort of sweetheart neckline puff sleeve top. So I think that's definitely gonna be really, really seen in 2022. Moving down in her outfit, we have the bow buckled strap pointed toe pump from Valentino Garavani and they're basically that gladiator style shoe that she's wearing. It goes up almost to her knee and you can find them at Nordstrom for only 17, 18, 50, and that's 30% off of their regular price. So these two are definitely an accessory that if you're gonna go for, will make a huge statement. But if this is the direction that Valentino sort of wants to take, instead of doing their rock stud collection and really pushing that to do something that has these bows on it, I think this is actually a really, really cute option. I don't know if I would do it in the gladiator style, but if you could just get like a pair of these as like a slingback shoe or with like the bows up the front of your foot. I think that that would be really, really cute. I think that I could actually see myself wearing these, especially in a neutral color, like black or white. They would probably go with a lot in my wardrobe, especially for the summertime. So who knows? Maybe you can take some inspiration from this very, very mix matched outfit from Emily and incorporate some of these into your summer wardrobe too. This next one, I don't know so much about. So this is from episode three when she's going to like scout out the different locations for her birthday party and she's wearing these 
parachute pants and it gets worse <laughs> with the top that she's wearing with it. It's like this fur trimmed cardigan and then she's got a paperboy style hat on top. It's something, <laughs> again, this is super fashion and maybe you would wear this to like fashion week if you're going to a very like avant-garde show. Um, but I, I only wanna take enough time to go through one of these pieces, so I'll choose the cardigan. And to me, it's very like Y2K inspired, which is a huge trend that we're seeing in 2022. But this cardigan to me was just bad. It's this pink fur trimmed cardigan from Blue Marine, which is a brand that I've never actually heard before, and maybe I'm the one out of the loop, but it's for $1,141. And to me, on something that is oh so trendy and oh so bad, like I, no, this one did not do it for me. Sorry, Emily. Okay, episode one. This to me is where the fashion really, really popped. And it wasn't with Emily, it was with this blazer that Camille was wearing, the one from Balmain, the really military one with the satin strips on the side with the gilded buttons. And I went nuts for that. I actually ended up trying that one on in my Balmain or come Balmain shopping with me video. So I'll have the thumbnail to that on screen if you wanna go and watch that one next. But that blazer actually retails for like 4,000-ish. Right now it's on sale for, I think it's 40% off. It ends up being, I think, 2,500. When I saw it, I could have got it for like 14. This one is super statement and super trendy, but I just loved it. I also love the sunglasses that Camille was wearing with that. I've got to look into those and see if I can find them. But what Emily was wearing was kind of like schoolgirl-ish to me, especially side by side comparing Emily to Camille. Emily looked very young and Camille looked very sophisticated and I don't know if that was on purpose, but anyway, she ends up wearing this Versace sweater and she pairs it with this Mugler skirt and on top of it, of course, the Ellie Stab silk green jacket is unavailable, but I actually preferred how the model was wearing it, belted, I would have worn it just as is. So without anything underneath, I would have just basically used that as like more of a wrap dress than as a jacket, but it's so beautiful. Of course it was gonna be sold out. This next dress I actually thought was stunning. Normally I'm not a huge fan of high-low dresses, but I thought that this lilac color was beautiful. I really, really think that we're gonna be seeing a lot more of this color in 2022 and it was actually by a super small French designer called Magali Pascal and it of course sold out right away but I think it's so cool how shows like this especially if they feature a design from a very small designer like that obviously skyrocketed their business and of course that dress is sold out but if you did want to look at their website some of their pieces are absolutely stunning so just looking at a few I want to just go to the spring summer 21 Eden collection and this is where you can see so many more really feminine styles Style dresses, a lot of different ruffles, and I love especially the high-low. I'm shocked that I'm even saying that, but I think it was a really good look, especially for the setting, like because they were by the beach and they had the marina right there. Like it was just a beautiful summer look. But definitely check out Magali Pascal because as a small French designer, it's definitely gonna be one that we see more and more of, and it, the prices I would imagine are just gonna be on the rise. Back to episode two, Emily ends up wearing a lot more Dolce Gabbana, which almost makes me wonder like are any of these looks sponsored by these brands I would imagine that especially with the popularity of season one of Emily in Paris that a lot of brands would sort of jump on the bandwagon for getting their products noticed through this show because there was also a lot of anticipation and especially because of the global situation everybody binge watched season one and was waiting for season two and Dolce & Gabbana was seen a lot so not only did we have that bralette and short set before but this dress is the same like patchwork, lots of different colors, really sort of brash colors like black, white, and red all together. It was okay. Again, it wasn't really my thing, but if it's yours, it can be yours for the price of $2,304. And it's currently 40% off on Farfetch, but it is a really cute mini dress style. And we saw a lot last summer, like the tiered dress look, which I think is gonna be coming back even stronger for the spring and summer of 22. And if you need 
needed the Louboutin tote that goes with it. It's also available at Saks Fifth Avenue for $2,656.87. I, I can't do it. I've never really been a fan of Louboutin anyway, not even with their shoes, which they're especially known for. I've just never really been a fan of red bottoms. I don't think that uh, well, I haven't heard that they're especially comfortable. I've actually heard the opposite, that they're really, really uncomfortable. So to me, if I'm spending a thousand or two thousand dollars on a pair of shoes, I want to make sure that I can actually walk in them and use them. And their bags, some of them are nice, but this one that actually just spells out Louboutin written all around it, it's a little bit too loud and in your face for me, but Saks Fifth Avenue has this and at a discount. So if you want to get it, maybe now's your chance. So I don't know if you're a team Alfie or team Gabrielle, but I'm team Balmain and this Balmain skirt was so good. I mean, everybody knows that I love a good Balmain piece and I've actually looked into getting some of their skirts because especially if it's in tweed, which this one was, it's this rose moyenne is the color of it and it's beautiful. It's one that she wears when she comes back from Alfie's the next morning. Well, She's wearing it both days, but when she comes back and ends up meeting Gabrielle in front of their building and she's wearing this skirt with the blazer on top, that was to me like the most chic outfit of the season and I loved it. That's actually something that I would wear and this skirt is $718. It's on sale from over 2000. So if there's something that I'm actually gonna get, I think it would probably be this, one, because I love Beaumont and two, because I can actually see myself wearing this skirt. I really think that the pink is cute. Of course, if they have it in white, I'm gonna go for that. But if you wanted a little pop of color, I think that this is a great way to go for it. She ended up pairing this with a Mark Cross limited edition 1845 mini trunk bag. And it's so cute, but it is not a cute price tag. It's about $4,050 Canadian. And with this one, I think it's cute. Not really something that I would go for only because if I'm gonna be investing that sort of money into a handbag, it's likely not gonna be um, Mark Cross, but I'm not saying that it's not a good option. If you wanna go for it, I'm sort of running in circles here. So. Let's move on to another outfit. And this next one is actually one of my favorites. It's the dress that she wore to her birthday party. The black sort of bodycon mini dress with the big pink bow. To me, this is such a cute look and it actually does come at a somewhat affordable price of only about $521 if I did my translation right because it ended up being listed on the Rotate website for I think 2,700 Danish Krone. So after doing the translation, I think it's about $520 Canadian, which is pretty good. It looks very fashion and runway, and especially because it's being sat next to Dolce & Gabbana, Versace, all of the really high designer labels that we've seen her wear time and time again. I think it's really great that they chose to put in a rotate dress. So if you like this one, it also comes in all black, which is super cute and might be a little bit more your speed instead of having the big pink bow on it. But this is a look that I thought was super cute. But now on to my absolute favorite look of the season season that Emily wore and it's the very last dress that she wears at the fashion show and it's that super ruffled red dress from Gian Battista Valli for H&M, the 2019 collection. I loved it. Normally I don't wear a ton of color but if I am going to wear it I love to wear red and especially this dress I feel like would be so fun to wear. It's like such a sort of princess dress. It's another high-low one, which I think if that's leaning towards a trend that we're gonna be seeing more of, I need to sort of like adjust my taste. This is such a beautiful look and especially with how her makeup and her hair was done. I just thought that it was a really great way to end the season with something really, really strong. Obviously we know there's gotta be a third season coming, so I would love to do another one of these videos when that comes out, but please let me know which outfit of the entire season, not just ones that I reviewed was your favorite and also let me know if you're team Alfie or team Gabrielle because I keep going back and forth but I don't know I think I think I'm leaning towards Alfie which I realize like he doesn't know how to cook and to me that's kind of a big thing but Anyway, let me know in the comments down below and I'd love to chat with you there. And if you would like to see some more of me, I'll have some more videos linked right after this one, especially that one where I try on the Balmain blazer that Kami wore in the very first episode. So I'll have that just a click away and I'll see you very, very soon in the next one. Bye guys.